Somebody said she had broken out of a window. Briefly in Chicago, the girl and I said, I'd love to see the film you're taking to France. And he said, well, let me set you up a screen. Her brother, her friends, hacked up for barbecue. Chairs made of human skeletons. Then she sank into catatonia. Texas lawmen mounted a month-long manhunt, but could not locate the macabre farmhouse. They could find no killers and no victims. No facts, no crime. Officially, on the records, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre never happened. But during the last 13 years, over and over again, reports of bizarre, grisly chainsaw mass murders have persisted all across the state of Texas. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre has not stopped. It haunts Texas. It seems to have no end. Here, we've got the victim's statement. Call for an ambulance in case there's any others still alive. <laughs> You know, there have been some chainsaw remakes that have been done that are quite good. There's going to be one coming out soon that I'm actually looking forward to. Tell me how much you love. How much? That much. That much? This much. That much. That much. <laughs> Only one that I'm looking forward to, or have looked forward to, because I haven't liked the rest of them. Toby came to me and said, I'd like you to do Chainsaw too." skilled craftsmen, these filmmakers. <laughs> these guys are going to put on a show that is worth you spending some time with. All of it, ma'am. This is Stretch on an open request line on K. Okla in Burke Burnett, Texas, Red River Rock and Roll from the tip top of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Hurry up, get out of here! They gotta hang up. Come on, hang up! Shut up, hurry up! There is a director's cut. There is all there has only been the DVD extra features. Those extra features have not been incorporated into the film. Everybody's at those football parties, huh? <laughs> yeah. Whole night washout. <laughs> Biggest meat eater weekend of the month, and we're gonna lose and money. They, and they put them on there, and it's like, boom, exploding titty. You know, it's just all over the screen. Some sick puppy's gonna see that and try it at home. No, no, you just go home, you try to stick a power drill through your titty, and you see what happens. Come on, get out of here! Where'd he come from? Where are um, they were simply featured as extra features. So no, there is not a director's cut. That's an excellent question. I understand that Toby said, you got the director's cut, I do I got it. <laughs> there was his cut, there was what he wanted. And there was there were also scenes and characters like TV Dinner, mm -hmm. which was a fantastic character that Stretch encounters as she runs through the underground lair. Um, you know, there's a whole host of things that we did not have time to shoot because we were under the gun with Cannon. And uh, Cannon did their cut. And uh, so, no, there's not a director's cut. When you watch the 35 millimeter print, all the way to the end, there's a stinger at the end where a disembodied hand is sitting on top of the Canon logo and goes like this. <laughs> because that was Toby's way of saying, this is not my cut. Canon cut their own, yeah. <laughs> when I moved to LA. Uh, I rolled right into another film for them. And I went to the camera offices and I met the two. I, I met Yoram and uh, uh, Menachem. And, um, and they were putting me in a movie with a director named Tim Nebranon. She was an Israeli. It was called The Eagle. I was going to make it with Michael Dudikoff. And, and then Cannon went belly up. Mr. Uh, that was the end of canon. Hello? Hello, Lefty? You hear that, the, the news I can break right now 
is Cannes is being reconstituted. Cannes Films is coming back. It will be great. I don't know. Has anybody seen Electro Electric Boogaloo? It is so great. It's so great. Red River Rock and Roll from the tip top of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I love the Universal Monsters. I still cry when Frankenstein sits down and is floating the blossom, lotus blossoms with the little girl. So Dennis was a very elegant man. He was originally from California, started his career in San Diego at the Old Globe Theater. Began collecting art early on. He was a mama's boy, even though he had a sister. He was a mama's boy. Um, but he was very, his interests were very esoteric. And um, one night I was going to take him to uh, here. We were shooting in Austin. I'd like you to play that tape, Missy. Come all the way up here to Burt Burnett. No shit. Yeah. Oh, you want to hear it now? I want to hear it on the radio, on your show. Uh-uh. I don't think it'd be legal to do that. FCC regulations, those things. Well, you just figure out how to do it and do it. <laughs> saxophone player named Kirk Whalum. If you've never heard Kirk Whalum, find him, download him, because the guy is awesome. And he was on 6th Street in Austin. I said, Dennis, I'm going to take you to see Kirk Whalum. He is awesome. He's the best saxophone player in the business. He goes, Caroline, I'm friends with Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk. <laughs> <laughs> you've been the rules. I don't know. Why? Because the killers are here. Do you really think your guy is going to make an impression on me? So I take him to this nightclub. He's on his feet all night. He is care. He goes to meet Kirk. He shakes his hand. They talk. It's an all-nighter, man. It's amazing. Next morning, we show up at work and he walks on set. He goes, yeah, you know, Took Caroline to, to discover Kirk Whalen. Thank you all. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. The Buzz is back. Directed by Toby Hooper.